Hello and welcome to How to Sell Your Home for Top Dollar During COVID-19 or doing, during 2020. I'm Catherine Jouet, I'm with Team Jouet Real Estate and I'm hosting tonight's seminar along with some great sponsors. And I'd like to point out that the goal of our seminar is to provide great and helpful information on how to sell your home for top dollar. We're gonna hear from each presenter on their individual topics. And at the end, we'll have a question and answer session. So I'd like to start by introducing tonight's participants. So I'm gonna ask each person to go ahead and say a quick word. Um, can we start with you, Kim? Hi everyone, I'm Kim Woods with Interstate Moving and Storage. Uh, sorry, Graham. Yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Graham Pruitt. I am a loan officer with Intercoastal Mortgage, and we're a local mortgage company. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. And Donna? Hi there. I'm Donna Seeker with Donna Frio and Associates Property Inspections, and I'm very happy to be here tonight with all of you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And I'd like to just point out real quick that we are using our platform as a fundraiser for the National Breast Center Foundation. I did, I did wear my jacket tonight. Um, this is a local foundation, a 5013C, that I'm very passionate about. I am a survivor, and this was founded by a local uh, breast surgeon through ANOVA, and he has a private practice in Old Town. His name is Dr. David Weintritt. The executive director is my neighbor, Martha Carucci, and together they provide screening and treatment for low income and uninsured and uninsured women in our community. Um, so we have the upcoming Walk to Bust Cancer, which is virtual this year. Their goal is to raise $100,000 for these kind of services that they provide mm -hmm. for the community. So um, it really is a great charity and it, it can't get any more local. It's, it's just a few blocks from my old town office. Um, so thanks again, everyone, for coming tonight. I'd like to talk a little bit about our topic. Um, the, the topic tonight is selling for top dollar. And in my experience, um, I guess I should say a little bit about me. I have been a realtor for 15 years. I'm with Keller Williams Metro Center in Old Town. I live uh, locally here in Fort Hunt in Waynewood. I'm licensed in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And I personally work only with sellers. I do have a team and I have two buyer specialists on my team. So I'm a listing agent. And I believe that selling a property is 80% pricing and 20% marketing. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, I also believe that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So prepping your home for sale is very important. We're gonna talk a lot about that tonight. It's even more important during COVID-19 because you really want to limit traffic into the home and limit exposure for everyone to the virus. So we will talk about how my business, my team and other realtors are adapting to practice real estate during the pandemic. Um, so for pricing, I just would say that it is important to know your market and you want to be sure that whatever price you decide to sell the home at, it's in the market. So you wanna look at like style homes, comparing apples to apples. You wanna stay within the neighborhood, not just in the zip code, because things can really vary here, uh, neighborhood to neighborhood. You wanna stay within the neighborhood, you wanna stay within a half mile, and you wanna compare like properties, similar lot sizes, similar style homes. You know, you don't wanna compare a three-story townhouse with a Rambler. It's not something that an appraiser would do. And so I look at pricing the way that an appraiser would look at pricing. Um, the other um, thing you wanna do when you price a property is reevaluate every two weeks. And when I meet with the seller to talk to them about selling, we discuss that up front that every two weeks we'll reevaluate. If we don't have an offer, especially in this market after two weeks, it's probably price. And so we wanna make a small adjustment. The other reason we do that is because the technology these days um, is that most people look at properties on their phone and it's all based on algorithms. And if you don't refresh something, either the media, like the photos and the video, video or the pricing of a property, they get stale and they don't come to the top of the list anymore. So it's important to re refresh something so that your listing 
comes up on the apps like Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com. So the other really important thing um, about preparing your home for the market is condition. And so two of our professionals are here tonight to talk about condition. And I'm first gonna ask Kim Woods with Interstate Moving and Storage to tell us about her program. And I can tell you that for the past 10 years, my clients have been going to Kim um, to declutter their homes. And she has an amazing program that she's gonna tell you about. Thank you, Catherine. Yes, uh, I work for Interstate Moving and Storage. I'm a move consultant. I've been there about 10 and a half years. And I think I've known Catherine since I pretty much started there. Um, she's been very kind to refer clients my way uh, for the declutter special as well as their move estimate. And I do both. What I do is um, when someone needs to declutter, we have a great special where two men come out, uh, we bring out two containers, you have them for four hours uh, and two months of storage for $550. And Catherine can certainly send you information on that if you need it. Um, but it's a great way to, you know, get some stuff out of your house that needs to be out to put the house on the market. Um, it's been very popular. Uh, and then the delivery out is, is either included in your local move estimate or a long distance move estimate, or if you just need the declutter delivered somewhere, that's fine too. Um, but we do, we do everything. Uh, we've been in business for 77 years. We're based right here in Springfield, Virginia. We have an office out by Sterling, one in Landover, Maryland as well. The Morissettes own the company and uh, grandfather Morissette started it uh, 77 years ago and the grandsons are still running it. So it's still family owned um, and we take pride in that because we still feel that our same quality is in place that grandfather Morissette set in place. Um, we're as big as a Mayflower allied but based right here uh, and it's just our company. So we have um, good control over um, our procedures and qualities. Um, you know, in this market, it is a little bit different. Um, we are taking a lot of precautions. We've been very lucky and had no issues. Um, some things we're doing a little bit different. The, the crews are um, tested. They're, they t have their temperature taken every morning. We are trying to keep the crews together rather than, you know, some guys, you know, kind of mi mingle and mix together different days for different jobs. But now we're trying to keep the same people together. So if someone does get sick, we know who it is and who they've been around, uh, which is very important. They are required to wear masks uh, during the move. So thank goodness fall is here uh, during the 100 degree weather, moving heavy furniture in, you know, for eight hours in a mask is not pleasant. So when I start complaining about wearing a mask, then I just think of them and then I feel better because it's not as bad as that. Um, Every truck is sanitized every day. They have extra sanitation stuff with them on every job. Um, so we've been, we've been very careful and had no issues. So we're very lucky about that and thankful. Um, but we do everything. We do the declutter. We do uh, local moving. We do storage. We do long distance moving, international moving, um, as well as packing. I mean, some people want to pack themselves, which is fine. Um, a lot of people have us do the fragile stuff, uh, maybe artwork. Um, the things that aren't as easy to pack or, um, you know, clothes, shoes, books, doesn't really matter how they're packed. Uh, they're not going to break. So if you can get to that stuff, you save a lot of money by doing that. Um, but we're happy to do it all or as little or as much as you want. So we can do just about everything in that respect. Um, right now we are doing, we're offering both virtual and in-home estimates. Um, you know, for several months we were doing only online virtual, whether it's Zoom, um, the what, um, I forget what the, the Android one is, but there's an Android one or FaceTime. We can do any of those. Uh, but most people at this point are comfortable with me coming out to the house to give them an estimate. Um, I think it's always better to see things, but at some point we, we couldn't do that. Um, but what I normally do, especially for the declutter, I'll come out and take a look at what you have, what Catherine says or a stager, her stager says to take out of the house for staging, make sure it fits within are two containers, but we can also do three. Um, after that, it just kind of is regular storage because it's not gonna fit within that um, declutter special. But uh, I go out and make sure that that declutter special is going to work um, and can also give an estimate on the full move at the same time. So you know the scope of the whole move, uh, not just one part of it. You'll you know, you'll know what it is for the whole move um, when the time comes. So we do that. 
Um, so I'm happy to do either one. When I go to do in-home estimates at this point, I am wearing a mask. Uh, most customers say, you don't have to do that. I had one customer today who said, oh, you don't have to wear it. And I said, well, you guys don't have to wear it. I do have to wear it for work. Uh, and they said, well, no one's going to tell on you unless you take a picture of yourself, which I wasn't going to, but um, I just felt better. I, I left it on and I, I will continue to do that as long as um, it's said that we should do that. So I'm um, going to do that. Um, and also with, uh, with Catherine, you know, make sure that, um, you know, clients are saying that, that they were referred by you because they do get a discount on their move as well. That's how we try to thank the realtor for the business. Um, Catherine's been so kind over the past. I think I've known you for about 10 years since I've been there. Um, so you get 10% off a, an hourly move, which is a local move, 10% off of storage pickup. If you just need a basic storage pickup, uh, and, a, and a, another percentage percentage off the discount based on our tariff for a long distance move, which is hard to explain, but I always, you know, spell out exactly what that is. And it's usually a couple hundred dollars. So, uh, every little bit helps. Um, so I'm happy to help with anything anybody needs, any questions, um, and certainly I can get you some information. We have, you know, tips on packing, the items that we can't take, um, just anything, you know, things you should do like three months before your move, six months before your move. So, um, you know, you can always contact Catherine to get in touch with me and I'd be happy to send you that information. Okay, I think that's it for now, thank you. Thank you, Kim. Um, I just, I'd like to point out, I have known Kim for a long time. And one of the great things about working together for so long is that I know that um, when I mention her services and I give her number to someone, I don't even have to worry about it. I know that Kim is going to respond, set an appointment. And sure enough, my clients say, oh, I'm meeting with Kim tomorrow. And they get really excited about meeting with Kim because it's kind of their first step in starting to declutter their home. And it's really helpful for me as the realtor to have someone else kind of helping them get stuff out of their house. It's not all me, it's, it's a professional mover. And it also gets them thinking about the, the end result, which is then moving to another house. So it's all kind of psychological and Kim takes really good care of my clients. I also wanted to point out that um, it doesn't have to be for a move, it could also be for a major remodel when Kim's services come in to play. Yes. And I personally went through a huge renovation of my own home. We tore down our garage, built a huge addition. And I used Kim's declutter package to have her movers and packers come and pack up my entire garage. They took it away and stored it in a climate controlled facility. And then they brought it back six months later when our renovation was complete. And that's a really, um, great option to have. So don't forget about that. And anyone that wants to get in touch with Kim, please let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay. And um, next, um, again, still talking about the condition of the home. And then we're going to talk a little bit about timing. And we're going to go to Graham to talk about the current mortgage market. Um, so now we're talking about the condition of the home. And I'd like to ask Donna um, of a home inspection professional to tell us a little bit about how to prepare your home for sale. Thank you. Thanks very much, um, Catherine. And Kim, I love that declutter package. That sounds like a dream come true. You know, <laughs> when you're taking on a project, you're like, let me get rid of this stuff. But um, yes, we are a uh, Donna Frio and Associates property inspections. We have been in business since 2001. We have a structural engineer on staff. And what we can do to help with uh, selling is we do have a, an inspection, a, a seller's inspection. It's the same as the buyer's, um, except that uh, it, it's just so the, the inspectors know someone's coming behind them. So they just are like, we are not going to miss one single thing, right? And um, that's very useful if you've been in a home for 30 years and, you know, oh, we know that faucet drips or whatever, we've lived with it, but not good. Um, you know, the buyers don't want that. So this is good to point those things out. And, you know, you might want to do these things before you, you list with Catherine. And um, there are some things that there are deal breakers when, when buyers are looking at homes. And those are generally, as I just gave the example, plumbing or the HVAC, 
and the roof because those are expensive. Plumbing, you know, maybe not as much, but it's annoying. <laughs> so, you know, please do, um, if you're considering selling your home, make sure that you tend to those things um, with whether it's with our aid, which hopefully it is, um, having the uh, pre-list inspection, but make sure you um, tend to those plumbing things that you've been dealing with because you've been in the home so long and you've just become accustomed to them. The, the buyer does not want that, you know, tend to your plumbing deficiencies, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. Go around, change the filters because that affects the efficiency of the HVAC system. Uh, we will look at the age of the um, HVAC system because that's evident with the model and serial number. And we know the design life and that will be recorded for the buyer. But still, if we can say, you know, it's working very efficiently, we got the correct temperature differentials that we were looking for. It's been well maintained. Look, nice clean filter, you know, that's all to your benefit. So, and you know, whatever the filters cost these days, it's still a very small investment to make to, again, show that you've taken the um, care to, to prepare for your buyers, your potential buyers. Um, and then the roof, of course, is, you know, a costly item. And, you know, the roof doesn't come with a serial number or a model number. So it is a little harder for us as inspectors to know exactly how old it is. Um, we have to go by the age of the property and then, of course, what the buyers, uh, excuse me, the homeowners, you know, if they say, well, we replaced the roof last year. Well, okay, that, that, that seems to be true. But we do take a visual from the street um, and photos to look at uh, specific shingles and around the flashing of any um, vents that are in the roof. But then also the telltale sign is when you go into the attic, are there, do we see daylight on a sunny day or is there, um, you know, a, a water because it's a, a rain, rainy day? Is there water coming through or just evidence of moisture? So um, it would behoove a, a, potent, a seller to, again, um, as they're talking with Catherine and getting ready to put the house on the market to say, to have a roofer come out and say, can you just give us a, a tune up? You know, we're not going to replace it because we're moving, but we want it to be tended to any problem areas. And again, any of that that you can um, show your potential buyers that you've done is all to, to your advantage. So, um, our reports are, um, have a lot of photos. They're like a reference manual for buyers is like I talked about the serial numbers and model numbers of the different systems, um, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, whenever those, you know, the hot water heater, the furnace. So we have those um, and the seller will know what they need to do or what they need to you know, say we elected not to do, but we're there to uh, work with the realtor, support the realtor any way we can and uh, make the house, you know, we just state the condition of the property when we're there. We don't make any, any, uh, state any opinions to anybody, you know, it's a beautiful house and Catherine's gonna, going to do a great job for you because that's what she does. She's been in business 15 years and there's a reason she's so successful. So glad to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Donna. And I will say that um, the, the HVAC filter is, is just a real pro tip because I, whenever I see a home inspector pull out a, a dirty filter, I think, um, you know, why didn't someone think to, to change that before home inspection? And I have boxes of random shapes and sizes show up at my door all the time because I find out what the size of the filter is and I order a few of them overnight, Amazon, and I make sure I have them in the house. And I always change the filter, especially when a house is vacant and someone has moved out. And Kim can probably tell you after the movers have been through a house, it can be really dusty and it can really clog the system. So changing the filters is one of the first things I do. Um, 
And Donna is going to provide her contact information as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to recommending her, her services. Thank you so much, Donna. Okay, um, while we're talking about selling for top dollar, we want to talk a little bit about timing. And many people have been surprised by the hot real estate market during this global pandemic. And yet, it's hard to overlook the economic factors uh, like the low mortgage rates that are contributing to this. We have also had extremely historically low inventory because a lot of people for obvious reasons are staying put. And some people are just deciding to put off any big moves or plans. There are people that have had employment changes. And so lack of inventory and high buyer demand due to low rates creates a super crazy hot real estate market. So we're gonna let um, Graham talk a little bit about the mortgage side of things. Thanks, Catherine, appreciate it. Um, Kim, I would definitely, I will definitely call you because I will never move myself again. It is, it is worth, it is so worth it to hire a moving company. You don't even, you can't even imagine. Um, so, I mean, for example, the other day I locked a gentleman in at a rate and I told him, I said, I've never locked anybody in at a rate this low on a 30 year fixed rate. So timing wise, the, the rates are just, they're, they're as low as I've ever seen them before. And it really is fueling a lot of people coming into the market are wanting to buy. And like Catherine was saying, the only issue right now we have is there's just a very low inventory. Now things are shifting a little bit, depends on what your price point is. If you're in the, you know, if you're in the higher end luxury real estate market, it's probably going to be more of a buyer's market than it is going to be a seller's market. If you're in the, you know, um, if you're sort of, you know, below a million or, or a little bit below that, I think it's, it, it is very difficult right now just because there's a lot of buyers who want to take advantage of these low rates and um, you know, underwriting standards have are, are pretty simple right now. It's a full documentation type of loan where you provide your pay stubs, W-2s, tax returns. And really if, if your uh, employment and your income is pretty steady, it shouldn't be very difficult at all to get approved for a loan, depending on what your loan size is. I think right now you have tons of options as far as down payment. I mean, you've got, um, without boring you with the details, I mean, you can go almost up to an $800,000 home putting 5% down, right? So there's a lot of options out there right now for people who don't have a significant amount of money to put down, which makes it uh, easier to access and for people to buy homes. So again, increasing that demand um, and putting more pressure <laughs> On, uh, on, on buyers out there that might be competing with a number of other people behind them. So, so in, in terms of the mortgage market, it's, it's fairly simple to get pre-approved these days. There's plenty of programs out there for people, uh, ranging anywhere from you know, doing a VHDA loan with no money down, um, you know, up to uh, you know, some lenders are doing 5% down up to a million. So th there's a lot of options out there right now. I will, I will have to say, COVID has impacted um, the jumbo market a little bit. So if you're in the upper price points, the, your options might be a little bit more limited from where they were before, um, but that's okay. We can find ways to work around that, but just understands that those are, some, those are some things that we're running into right now. I do wanna share my screen. And I think when, obviously when you're selling, there's in most cases, you're also gonna be buying, right? You're either gonna be selling the first house that you bought and moving up, you've got a few children and you're, and you're busting at the seams and you need to get a bigger house or um, whether or not it's, your, it's the house that all your kids grew up in and you're downsizing and moving, you need to have a game plan for whatever your next move is. So just as important as prepping the house and getting it ready to sell for top dollar, it's important to have your game plan set for what you're gonna do on your next, on your next move. So I'm gonna share my screen here and just talk a little bit about what a game plan looks like. You guys see it? Yep, good. Okay, cool. So here's, here's, what we, here's what we can do. Here's some steps that we can do if you guys are getting ready to sell your house with Catherine. So we meet to discuss your move up plan. Where are you guys going? What's your plan? What's your price point? You know, we run a custom move up analysis because what's gonna happen is, is that you're gonna have, you're gonna be netting a certain amount of money you're going to know the price point that you're going after once you sell. 
and we really want to we really want to come up with a game plan on what that looks like. So we execute the sell and move up transaction. So what does that look like? We meet to discuss the move up plan. So what's the location? What's your timing? What are your property specifics? Payment and capital goals, which means what what do you want to pay for a mortgage on this next move up? Right? What what is your ideal mortgage payment that you want to have? And then obviously sitting down with Catherine, knowing what she thinks she can sell the property for, we're going to have capital goals or money goals. So you're going to walk away with $100,000 from your sale. How do we use that in the next house to um, come up with a game plan? So the last part of this is comps in the seller's net sheet. So we'll help you figure out as well what you're going to net from the sale of your property. Okay. Um, you know, we run, we run your, your custom move up analysis. We verify qualification. We run payment and capital analysis, just like we talked about. Um, and then here we, you know, this is, this is an option here, but determine seller buy down options and needs if necessary. So really what we're doing here is, is that, you know, if Catherine says, Hey, you can only sell your house for X and you thought you could sell it for Y, we have to now adjust what your plans might be for that next move up, right? Do we uh, put less money down to preserve it just in case there's some work that needs to be done on the house. So we go through all of these things and we really want to come up with a tight game plan for what you need to do. Um, so right here we execute and sell and move up. We execute the sell and the move up transaction. So you sell with Catherine and then we, and then we hit the plan that we had set up for your next purchase. And down here it says create a plan B with a seller buy down. So Catherine mentioned, mentioned if the list, if your house may sit for a little bit longer, obviously we want to sell it for top dollar. Sometimes houses sit for a little bit longer than you'd like. We want to have, we want to have a plan B just in case that happens, because if you don't net what you thought, how is that going to impact your move up for the property that you want to move into? So we obviously want to have a plan B just in case. So we talk about that as well. So, and that's it. We start packing, we do all this stuff and then you get with Catherine and um, execute the sale and then we move, we do our, our next move and you're all set. You have everything that you need. There's no stone that we haven't unturned so that there's no surprises. People do not like surprises in these transactions. So if we can come up with a really tight game plan, have a plan B just in case it doesn't sell for what you thought, I think at the end of the day, you're going to be a happy client and Catherine's going to have, um, Catherine's going to be very happy too. So um, that is our, that's our plan. Graham, um, can you share with us what's the lowest 30 year mortgage rate you've seen in the past few weeks? So I just locked, uh, I think I locked somebody in at 2.625 on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. That's so fantastic. They're, yeah, they're, they're way down there. Yeah. yeah. And really what uh, that people... does is, I mean, if you were to think about, if you were to compare that to an interest rate of 4%, I mean, you're probably looking at an increased pre-approval amount by, you know, $45,000, $50,000. So it really does have an impact. If rates uh, go back up to those levels, it certainly has an impact on people's qualifications. So as long as these rates stay low, I think you're going to see um, prices stay, stay stable and continue to rise. If rates go up a little bit, it could have a slight impact on, on price, but we've seen it happen before. We've seen them go from low threes up into the fours. And it really didn't, it didn't matter. It didn't shift anything. So it is such a strong buyer's market right now. There's so much pent up demand that as a seller, I think, you know, unless you're in those super high luxury uh, price points, I really think you're going to have the pick of the litter in terms of who, who's going to be purchasing your house. I mean, Catherine sees it every day. She's a listing agent. So she's the one going through the five to 10 offers on each property that she has listed. So, um, you know, on the mortgage side, Catherine, do you want me to talk about, you know, what people are doing, some strategies people are doing to win contracts? Uh, sure. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got, well, I wouldn't necessarily say these are mortgage strategies, but just strategies in general for, to get people's um, offers to the top of the pile. I mean, you have people are waiving their appraisal uh, contingencies, right? Which puts the buyer in a position that if, it, if the property doesn't appraise, they've got to come up with the difference. Um, you've got people who are waiving financing contingencies. And if you're a seller accepting somebody who's waived a financing contingency, you know, from a buyer's perspective, I mean, they really have, they would have needed to go through the process with their lender 
all the way, given them all of their documents, pulled credit, really reviewed it with a fine tooth comb just to make sure that, you know, it, that there's no, that there's no way that they wouldn't qualify for the loan. So if you're a seller accepting somebody's offer like that, you really want to be doing your due diligence. Um, you know, we're just seeing, you know, I had just people are going way over asking price and then, you know, obviously figuring out if they've got enough cash to support paying the difference if it doesn't appraise. So lots of things that people are doing right now to try to um, get their, get their contract to the top of the pile and get chosen. Since you bring that up, I will um, say this. And since uh, we closed today, I won't jinx anything. Um, <laughs> and I will also give a caveat that this property was not in Virginia. I am licensed in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. I sold a property in Maryland that closed today. We received 29 offers for this property. It was a record in my 15 year career. And it happened to be the day that my assistant was out sick and I spent 10 hours making a spreadsheet to make sure that I didn't miss any details of any offer that I was going to present to my seller. And I did have legitimately 29 offers for the property. It escalated $50,000 over the asking price mm. and it appraised. So yeah. it, it closed today. So the market is bonkers. Yeah. Bananas, as they say. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> um, okay, um, thank you so much, Graham. And I, yeah. I will just add that it. Um, I tell um, we, my team tells all of our clients that it's very important to use a local direct lender with boots on the ground, local appraisers and underwriters who know the the area underwriting that is done in house. It's yeah. all very important, and we steer our clients to to local lenders. And as a listing agent. When I'm reviewing offers, I have the same preference. I, I talk to my sellers about the importance of going with a lender who is going to get the buyer to the closing table. So we highly recommend our local lenders. Um, okay, um, thank you, Graham. And I'd like to talk a little bit about photography now. And now more than ever, the quality of photography and video is very important for two reasons. One, you want to limit the traffic coming into the home as much as possible, especially if it's occupied. And number two, people just aren't going out as much. So people want to look at homes online and look at homes on their phone. And only if you make the cut and you know people look at pictures on their phone, they swipe really, really fast. So if they see a dark room they may just keep going and they may not ask their agent to see that house. Um, if they see a blue toilet, they might just keep going. So we have to make sure that the photos and the video um, represent the home for what it is and that it shows the home in the best light to get people in the door. Because as you know, something may not look great in the photos. You may not think you like it, but you may walk in the door and fall in love. So the goal of the, the videos and the photos is to represent the home in the best light and also to represent it accurately. And we do that in a number of ways. And I'm going to screen share with you and share a couple of videos. I am aware of the time and I'm, I'm watching the time so we can wrap up shortly for some questions. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to go to my YouTube channel and share a video. Now I've lost you guys. I told you I was bad at this. All right. Share my screen. Desktop. It's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Well, here's a quick video. This is not the one I wanted to show, but I'm gonna show. Give me one second. This one. Okay, can everybody see that? We got it. Yeah, make it bigger. Yep. Mm. No.
like that. Okay, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Okay, I managed to not show dog photos or something. So I think <laughs> I made some progress there. Um, so you can see by that video, um, that's done by local photographer, uh, Tammy Laverdos, who had planned to be with us tonight. And she had to cancel at the last moment because she was doing a twilight shoot down at a waterfront property in Old Town for which she has to have the ideal conditions and um, I couldn't fault her for that. She does a great job. She, um, Tammy did that video. That is my current listing on Cool Spring Drive that is under contract right now. It is a luxury home. I'm a certified luxury agent. And that video I thought was a really good representation. Um, did you kind of feel like you were touring the house? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, Lots I thought it was really good. It showed everything very nicely. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really, really nice house. Um, and I'll just show you one more thing um, on screen share that shows how we do a virtual tour and floor plans of a house. And this will only take a sec. I can get it here. Oh, there we go. See, I said I was going to do something like that. See if I can find this. I don't know why I have that. I don't even play soccer. Let's see. No. Okay, so maybe I'm not gonna show you. Let's see. I had this. Well, you're definitely better than I am, but Graham seems like he might be the expert at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I had this open for us to use it and now I'm not finding it. Um, so I will show you, this is the last thing I'll show you. Um, I'll show you, um, I'd like to point out that there is a difference between professional video and Catherine video. This is a Catherine video that I did, um, you know, by myself with a, with a selfie stick. So I just like to show you how we do an open house in COVID-19. This is super short, uh, less than a minute. Okay, so everyone take their drama mean because my <laughs> videos are not very professional. Um, and yet I think you get the idea of how we can safely do a, an open house during COVID-19. Um, so that was basically what I wanted to talk about. And I'd like to uh, wrap up and see um, if anyone has any questions or if any of our panelists had any last minute thoughts. Catherine, how do you, so we're selling for top dollar. How do you, how do you guarantee people like a, a price? Do you guarantee people a price or is it, you just say, hey, we're going to list it at what, what I think it's going to sell for really fast or how do you take other people's? Advice? Well, you can never really guarantee anyone a price. And, and part of the reason is because the property, um, genuine, you know, generally, unless someone waves it, we'll have to appraise. Um, mm -hmm. What I do is I set what I think is a realistic expectation a lot of times I say, this is the pie in the sky price. This is the price that I think it will appraise for. And this is your worst case scenario. 
and I do seller estimated net worksheets at each of those price points right. that show closing costs, realtor fees, cost of staging, anything like that. And it will show what the seller will walk away with as net proceeds in their profit at each of those price points. And I try to make sure that the seller doesn't fall in love with that, the high number <laughs> on that sheet. Um, another thing that um, we do is if I, if I run comps and I think appraisal may be a problem, it's something that I have a big discussion with the, the seller about because that is something out of our control. Um, an appraiser is a third party and some appraisers will use comps in another neighborhood. Some, some appraisers won't go out of the neighborhood. Um, some appraisers are really strict on condition and, and some aren't. So we just, we always have to know um, that even if we pick up high in the sky price that an appraiser may not back it up. And yet sometimes we get really lucky with that as I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that also has to do with the market. If the market's hot and everything's selling high, then appraisers are more likely to, you know, uh, appraise properties at, at sales value in, in a good market, not in a declining market, that can be a problem. Okay, well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. I think this is some really helpful information. Um, I do have some various checklists about how to get your home ready for a photo shoot, how to get your home ready for showings. I have some information on Kim's declutter special. I have Donna's contact information for home inspections. We have Graham's contact information. And as he said, he offers a, a consultation, an initial consultation, which I think is a great idea just to get people thinking. People have a lot of misperceptions about how much money they need or how they have to finance things or how it works. And it can be really worth your time and money to spend 20 minutes on, on the phone with somebody like Graham. Good information. Yes, everyone. I loved it. Me too. Thank you. And Fraser, thank you for organizing. To all of you. Yeah.